Hello crafters and welcome to another How To Wow video. I am Nicole Watt, the Pixel Maven at Pixel Maven's Retreat. In this video, we'll be looking at this card and how I created the background using just plain paper. This is not uh, watercolor paper or anything that's really designed to take water, but there's a really easy way to make any paper you have uh, suitable for watercoloring. So let's set this aside and take a look at what I have here today. So I have taped up on my board a piece of designer paper, so a paper with a pattern on it, and a piece of Stampin' Up! Whisper White. And we love Stampin' Up! Whisper White for its nice, fine, smooth quality for stamping, but a lot of times we want to watercolor on it. The problem with watercoloring is that it will bubble up on the paper and you get this kind of funky texture that a lot of times you really just don't want with, um, with a project. So there's a way to get around that, and that is by applying clear gesso to the top of the paper. Now gesso is designed um, to prep any kind of surface for watercoloring or other, um, or other painting. So I've applied some to the designer paper here, and I can feel that it's what they call toothy. It has a grit to it that, um, that indicates to me that it has gesso on it. Um, so I'm just going to show you real quick how I apply it. And you just shake this up, and you can get this at any craft store online on Amazon. I have a link below. And I just put a drop on here, and I'm going to take a nice flat brush and just apply it like so. And you want a nice thin layer, and I found that I've got like some little gunky pieces, so I just lift those up and um, wipe them off on a paper towel. And you just want to apply a super, super thin layer. We don't need a lot. Um, just this little, um, very, very thin layer is going to protect the paper. Okay, and I have this taped down on a hard board, which is really just a piece of MDF, and that will help keep the paper flat as we work with it. So I'm going to go ahead and heat set this so that way it dries. You could let it dry naturally, but um, for the video, of course, I'm going to heat set it. So just a second here. And this dries very quickly. You can see on the, um, on the tape, you can tell that it's drying very fast. And it will start to bubble, the paper itself will start to lift from the board, but once it's dry, it will go back to its flat state because we have it taped down. It's almost dry. All right, so that's all you need to do to prep your paper for um, for watercoloring. So right now, like I said, it's it's toothy. It has a texture to it. So if I were to watercolor with it right now, and I have some um, Daffodil Delight, and that's what I used in this card sample. And I really, I just used the lid and put some reinker in there. I didn't actually use the pad. So if you just have the reinker, you just want to use the reinker, just put it on a a piece of plastic that you can use. And you could use your aqua painter, but I'm going to use a lot of water here. So I'm setting the aqua painter aside and just using a regular um, paintbrush and some water. So let me show you what it looks like um, toothy. And you can see it's going to absorb the water, which is good. And then I'm going to grab some ink and it's going to go right in. And hopefully you can see that there's texture in there. And the nice thing about using the gesso, so another thing, okay, one thought at a time. The nice thing about using the gesso is that it, this is just gonna sit on the top. So if you don't like something, you can come back and start moving it around. See how that, it just doesn't, it's not really dry. So when you do this on regular Whisper White, once it's there, it is soaked into the paper and you're kind of stuck with what you have. So that also helps with the idea of blending. So this is um, pumpkin pie. 
And if I wanted to blend, I could really, I could really blend in here nicely. Grab some water and just move that around as much as I want. So isn't that really cool how that works? Um, so another thing before I finish on this side, on this particular card, I thought, well, could I make it smooth? And this one is totally smooth. So I just used um, some sandpaper and I just sanded the whole piece. Now this had black on it, so it's gonna discolor the paper. So be careful with your sandpaper, make sure that it's clean, otherwise you're gonna get the color transfer. So I just sanded that really lightly and then um, just came back and and wiped it off. So this side now is toothy and this side is as smooth as can be. It, it feels like a matte version of our Whisper White paper and it takes everything the same way. So um, there you go. And the cool thing about this, so now that I've got this, I'm just going to hit this with my heat gun. It dries very quickly and then I can go ahead and do things like um, spatters if I want or I can add a whole other layer and kind of push more ink around. And if you leave it nice and wet when you go to heat dry it, it will create things like this where you've got um, water spots. Because see it's moving the water around, I can even add a little more. And then you can use your paper towel to just dab it up when you want to be done with it. You see how I have this nice spotting around here. All right, so you get the picture. So then the same thing can be said for our um, designer paper now. Previously, you would have watercolored on this and it would have soaked in and it would have looked really gross. But now, I can do like a panel. And you can hear when I'm scrubbing against that, that's not the paper, that's the, um, that's the brush against the tooth of the gesso. So now I have like this yellow panel. give that a minute to dry and then if I wanted to I could put another layer darker in here all right so you get the picture and then you can do like sp splatter splattering with water is great because then you can come back with your paper towel and just dab that up and what it's going to do is lift the color just like it would with a regular watercolor. And then you'll end up with spots of where it's been, um, where the water, or where the color has been lifted. There. All right, so I would just go ahead and let that dry, and then I can apply it to a card base. Now, one thing to remember is that it never truly sets into the paper. So you may want to spray it with a fixative or um, some kind of 
uh, lacquer finish or something like that. Um, let me just show you what I mean. Because up here, well down here, I can still move this paint around if I want to. All right, so just beware that if it gets wet, it will ruin the watercolor you have going on. So you will probably want to spray it with some kind of fix um, so that everything stays in place once you have it done. I hope you enjoyed learning this really cool technique with gesso and plain paper and that you apply it to a project um, soon that you're working on. If you do, please do use the hashtag PMR Craft Maven and I will share it with all of my followers. Until next time, happy crafting.